Hello and welcome to another in our series of devotionals on the first letter of Peter, a text in the New Testament that keeps before us the question, as God's holy people, how should we live? Both at the very beginning of this letter and here at the beginning of the passage that we will read today, Peter calls us aliens and strangers in the world, but he does not allow us to live without concern for our neighbors. Peter calls us to become strangers to sinful desires, setting our hearts fully on the gift which God has prepared for us, but not to be strangers to doing good for others. So one of the questions that our lesson today uh, puts before us is, how can you as an individual disciple, how can we as a community of disciples make a consistently positive impact on our unbelieving neighbors. So let's read together from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 to 17. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that even though they slander you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. For the Lord's sake, accept the authority of every human institution, whether of the emperor as supreme or of governors as sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing right, you should silence the ignorance of the foolish. As servants of God, live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. Honor everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Christian groups in the first century were viewed as pockets of vice and perversion. They were often accused of weaving cannibalism, incest, and oaths to commit crimes against the society at large into their rituals that they performed in secret in the houses of other believers. Since outsiders did not know much about Christianity, slander and rumor filled out the picture for them. And so Peter urges believers to embody the best values of the society so that outsiders may find their suspicions disconfirmed by the actual practice of believers, and even come to honor the God who forms such virtuous people as Christ followers turn out to be. We will find that all of 1 Peter 2.11 through 4.19 gives positive instruction for how to live out a winsome and honorable witness in the world while also not compromising essential loyalties and boundaries. One timeless way in which Christians are called to witness is through doing good to their neighbors and their community. What opportunities has God given you to embody the virtue of generosity, giving of yourself for others through gifts or acts of service? As non-Christians in the first century saw that the fruit of becoming Christian was not antisocial crime, but charitable and even generous action, they would eventually, Peter hoped, give glory to the God whose own generosity was being mirrored in God's people. You might have heard an echo of Jesus' teachings in the passage that we uh, read from 1 Peter today. We read in 1 Peter uh, uh, 2.12, conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that even though they slander you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he judges. Perhaps that calls to mind the words uh, 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 of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verses 14 and following. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. 
In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The witness for which Jesus and Peter called is still the best answer to modern critics of Christianity. So will you allow your faith both to preserve your moral integrity and to lead you to invest yourself in the needs of the community around you? So some of the questions that this passage puts before us, which we might reflect and pray on as we seek to discern God's challenge to us would be, does God call you to repent today of some practice, some sin, which has compromised your witness? And second, does God call you to some act of kindness today, throughout the week, ongoingly, as a witness to God's love and an opportunity for others to give God glory. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. And I hope that we will also have the occasion to worship together, even uh, at a distance, but together in spirit and uh, through virtual technology. Uh, Sunday morning, uh, 8 a.m., uh, broadcast on 91.7 FM. 9.30 and 11 a.m. Um, live streamed through our Facebook page and also our church's website, pcumc.info. Hope to see you then. In the meanwhile, may God keep you in his grace, keep you walking in the ways uh, that please him, that he will approve at the last. <laughs>